Let's listen in. To me, it feels a little bit like the first day of school. <laughs> Our Ontario Liberal Caucus is ready to continue holding Doug Ford and his Conservatives to account. And we will fight their reckless plans to put their well-connected insider friends ahead of Ontario families. Our health care system is in crisis, and this Conservative government is facing a criminal investigation by the RCMP for their Green Belt giveaway. They're selling off Service Ontario to large, multi-billion dollar American companies and spending millions of dollars fighting losing court battles. This government has spent more than any other in Ontario's history and has nothing to show for it. As the Ontario Legislature returns today, Ontarians can expect Doug Ford to pull out all the stops to distract from his failures, his reversals, scandals and his insider deals. We saw it last week. Rather than focusing on the real challenges facing Ontarians, he spent all his time talking about, well, me and trying to bind a future Ontario Liberal government. I guess he knows deep down that he'll lose the next election. But we're not going to let Doug Ford distract us with these stunts. Ontario Liberals will remain squarely focused on fighting for better health care, education and more housing and a growing economy that lifts up every Ontario family. And now I'd like to welcome John Fraser to the podium. Thank you, Bonnie. Uh, just a few brief words about what we're going to focus on in the next session here in the Legislature. So, at every opportunity, we're going to remind people about what Doug Ford's really good at. Taking care of his friends and insiders. Whether it's the $8.3 billion backroom Greenbelt deal, ministerial zoning orders, sole source contracts, staples, the list goes on. Doug Ford always make sure his friends come out on top. And that's why there's a criminal investigation by the RCMP into his government's backroom deals with land speculators. We know all roads lead back to the Premier's office. Everything Doug Ford is doing right now shows that he's more worried about this election. Take a look at the, what's on the order paper, the things that he's talking about. He's focused on the next election. What's he worried about? What's this paranoia with Bonnie Crombie and the Ontario Liberals? Why so much focus when he should be focusing, focusing on the things that matter most to Ontario families? And that's what we're going to do. We're going to focus on those things that help families thrive. Their hospitals, their schools, their colleges and universities. And we'll be proposing measures that will help Ontarians. Lastly, Doug Ford is a big talker. And he often comes up short in delivery. And if we were talking about sandwiches, I'm sure Doug would say, I'm going to make you the greatest sandwich ever. But what we've seen time and time again is that sandwich is, is two pieces of day-old bread, a slice of cheap bologna, and some discount mustard. And lastly, uh, I'm going to ask my colleague Lucille to say a few words about how uh, our caucus and indeed all independents are being restricted and the government is using every opportunity to silence our voices. Thank you. Lucille. Thank you, John. Bonjour tout le monde. Uh, it's a pleasure to be back. Uh, C'est vraiment une session qui commence sur des chapeaux de roue, on va dire. Uh, and uh, it's not often that we publicly talk about process, but I have to say, in my role as the House Leader, I have the responsibility to organize our speaking in the House in collaboration with the other independent members, and I really try to make sure that we make the most of it. But late last week, the Government House Leader's Office notified us that they would not be supporting the unanimous consent motions required for us, independent members, to participate fully in the business of the House this week. Uh, 
For example, they have determined it's not necessary for us to respond to the ministerial statements planned for this week, even though they are about nonpartisan, very important issues, such as human trafficking awareness in the war in Ukraine. What is he afraid of? Our ability to voice the perspective and concerns of the hundreds of thousands of constituents from across of Ontario that we represent will also be restricted when it, come to, when it comes to private members' business. If this government truly believes it's doing such a great job, then they should have no problem allowing us to express the concerns of our constituents in the House. And yet, this government has a history of restricting the ability of opposition parties to express legitimate concerns and do their job effectively. Just this past fall, there were, there were times when the government simply decided not to communicate, communicate any information at all to opposition parties about the upcoming business for the House. And when they did decide to let us know what debates were coming up, they would do so with very little notice, introducing a bill one day and debating it the next, giving opposition parties no time at all to properly review legislation and consult stakeholders. Since 2018, this government has consistently demonstrated its contempt for transparency, informed debate, and effective representation, all fundamental aspects of our democracy. One of their first moves, in fact, as government in 2018, was to increase the number of seats required to become a recognized party from eight to 12. 12 seats in the House of 124, that's almost 10%. In the House of Commons, which this government likes to copy most of the time, a party also needs 12 seats to become a recognized party. But as we all know, the House of Commons is three times bigger than the Ontario legislature. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that the government did not make that change because they were concerned about improving our democracy and the representation of Ontario citizens. There are now 16 independent members in the legislature. That's twice as many as the previous threshold to be a recognized party and still significantly higher than even the current threshold of 12. We must be able to participate fully in all aspects of legislative business without having to ask for unanimous consent each time. We also should have representation on the Board of Internal Economy. The board makes significant decisions about the functioning and expenses of this legislature. And all that power should not fall into the hands of only two people. Once again, this is a demonstration of this government disdain for transparency and accountability. The makeup of the board should be increased to at least four people and include representation from the independent members so that decisions are made with adequate input and discussion rather than as another backroom deal. We cannot simply, simply ignore this situation any longer, and that's why we're speaking out today. Our constituents deserve proper representation in this House, and that means enab enabling independent members to participate fully in all the business of the House. I'm ready to work with Minister Calendra and his team to make appropriate changes to the standing order so that we can ensure that the voices of all Ontarians have a place in this legislature. Merci beaucoup. Thank you for your attention. Merci. Thank you. All righty. So, we are now ready for your questions. Can you clarify your position on the carbon tax? I expect we're going to hear a lot about that over the next little while. So, can you lay it out clear? Why do you think about the existing carbon tax? What will you do if it's eventually repealed? Where do you stand? Yeah, exactly. So, thanks for the question. And like I said earlier, Doug Ford is desperate. He's trying to pull out all the stops to distract from his failures his reversals, the scandals, and the insider deals, like, of course, the RCMP investigation into the Green Belt, the sell-off of Service Ontario to multi-billion dollar U.S. corporations, and, of course, the privatization of health care. And that's why he's spending all his time talking about me and trying to bind a future government. We're not going to let Doug Ford distract us from these with these stunts. This government has only made things worse. 
as Ontario Liberals, we're going to do our homework. That's what I was taught by Hazel McCallion. We are going to consult with our residents, with stakeholders, with scientists um, and Ontario families, and we will develop a strong and a progressive plan to urgently tackle the issue of climate change. Because getting this right is critical for Ontarians, because this climate change is, is burning in Ontario, and Doug Ford is only making things worse. I just, it's hard to imagine like an adult these days having not formed an opinion at this point in their lives on whether carbon taxes are, are a good thing or not. Why are you not sharing your opinion with us or do you actually not have one? No, I've, I've, I've made my position very clear that we as the Ontario Liberal Party are going to do what it takes to develop a strong and progressive plan, but we're going to do so after we consult with Ontario families, with scientists and with stakeholders. Look at my record as the mayor of the city of, of Mississauga. We created over 15,000 clean tech jobs, attracted 450 co companies to our city. Um, and in fact, we were the first municipality um, to declare a climate change emergency back in 2019. So I know this caucus, we want to get it right for Ontarians and we want to tackle the issue of climate change, but we're going to do it right because as, a, as a, my mentor taught me, you got to do your homework and then you won't be subject to reversals and getting things undone rather than done um, when you make proclamations in, in the legislature. Okay, I've been listening in as a new party leader, uh, Bonnie Crombie, of course, does not have a seat at the legislature, though, uh, speaking inside the media studio, surrounded by her liberal colleagues and caucus members, uh, talking, of course, on the day that MPPs are returning to work for the first time in 2024, laying out kind of the liberal agenda and priorities uh, as we get ready for another session down at Queen's Park.